Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zara and today I'm going to be doing my first book review. The book that I'm going to be talking about is one that I have absolutely loved and that is The Winter Road by Adrian Selby. This book, oh, this book is just so good. Honestly, I was completely taken aback by the way that he writes and the way that he develops characters, the way that he writes dialogue, action scenes, it's just oh it's just so well done I finished the book and it was one of these moments where i just kind of sat back in bed and i was just like oh man that's such a satisfying read such a satisfying ending even though it's depressing as hell so anyway what i loved about the book let's kind of i'm gonna kind of just go in about what i loved and what i what i didn't love as much and then my kind of overall view of the book what i'll do down below is link a copy of the book somewhere probably black Wells or waterstones so that you can check it out yourself, the plot, and, and see if it's, if it's up your road. But anyway, I'm gonna jump in. So what I loved about this book, the first thing that I absolutely adored about this book is the main character. She is phenomenally written. Tia Amundsen, I think it's Tia, or it's maybe Tyre, but I'm not sure, but I'm gonna go ahead and assume it's Tia. Tia Amundsen is one of the best female characters that I've ever read, especially in fantasy. I mean, overall, yes, but especially in fantasy. I feel like women in fantasy stories are often written in a very masculine way. And I like a female character who can be very vulnerable, who can be very raw, who can be fragile, because, you know, that's what I'm like. Or I find it difficult to do that, but I try to be vulnerable sometimes. And I just, I felt like she was a character that I could really get on board with and somebody that I could really relate to. And that doesn't really happen to me often in fantasy. I think there's maybe one or two other characters in, in fantasy books specifically that I could relate to somewhat, but it doesn't happen often. And just reading her as an MC, it was just super refreshing. There are a lot of really intense themes in this book. This is another thing that I really love about the story. Um, there are themes of like motherhood, ambition, what it's like to be a woman in a man's world, family, identity, and a lot of that is centered around her naturally because she's the main character but it's handled in such a way where it doesn't feel forced it doesn't feel like it's there for shock value it has a purpose and it has a purpose in her character development and also the plot development and i just think that's really i think that's quite hard to do especially in fantasy and it just feels very real. Like it feels like this could be happening in my life. Like some of the stuff that she goes through, I mean, obviously like not necessarily the fantastical elements, but some of the questions that she's asking herself, some of the more moral and ethical and philosophical questions that she brings up. These are questions that I ask myself, you know, pretty often. And so seeing that in a fantasy book was really, really cool. And I just, I loved it. I was really, I was very, very surprised that he wrote her in that way. And I'm just like, huge kudos to Adrian Salby for being able to do that so well. And I've, I've heard that that's a very common theme in, in all of his books, in the other two books that he's written. So I'm super excited to delve into them as well and see how the female characters are portrayed in that. The other thing I, I really love is, is that there is quite a lot of political, political intrigue. I wouldn't really say it's intrigue, it's just more that there is a lot of politics. You know, it's set in a world where there are family houses kind of warring against each other. Land is, is very much the commodity and it's set against the backdrop of different clans, I guess, and just kind of fighting against each other. And she's basically trying to, to unite them for a very specific goal that she has in mind. And I have to say like the, the one downside of that is, is in the early part of the book, there is a lot of names to remember. There's a lot going on. And it took me a while to really understand like who the big players were, what their motivations were, you know, where they are, all of these different things. And it just, it took me a while to get there. But once I got there, it kind of all, all the puzzle pieces fit together. So I definitely do think, you know, stick with it. If you find that you're not uh, clicking with the names or all of the kind of different people involved, you'll get there. I would say it probably takes like the first part of the book to actually get to that point, but you'll get there eventually like I did. The other really standout thing for me was the dialogue. I think the dialogue is just perfect. It took me a little while to get used to because he writes the dialogue in such a unique way. Once you get used to it though, and you really, you really get a sense of like 
who the characters are and what their roles are and what their what their belief system is the dialogue is super impactful like they talk about as i mentioned earlier like this is a book that feels very real. It talks about very real topics and the dialogue reflects that so beautifully. There are multiple conversations in this book that I still remember. I mean, admittedly, I only finished the book over the weekend, but they are still very much sticking in my mind, which doesn't actually happen that often for me. There are even a couple of quotes that I bookmarked, which I never do. I bookmarked them because they were just so good um and so i just um i mean i was blown away by the dialogue i think the dialogue was just very very beautifully written and there are things that are said in this book that really hit me personally and again that just that doesn't really happen to me that often so kudos to you again adrian selby in terms of what i didn't really gel with and i think this ultimately comes down to personal preference i didn't really like the slow start there is a little bit of a slow start where you're you're kind of swapping between the the present timeline and then there is a second timeline which is set one year before the present timeline and you're kind of you're you're swapping between the two to kind of catch up to the current timeline which is where part 2 begins and i think overall like i think the two timelines make sense but the beginning is definitely a little bit slower because it's setting the context of what is happening it's setting the scene it's introducing a lot of characters but once you kind of get through that initial struggle, I would say, the book really picks up. And I have to say in particular, the last third of the book is just, it's just a wild ride. I was reading this with Angela, whose bookstagram I will link below. And I think we could, I think we both agreed that the last third of the book was just like absolutely insane. And it was just really, really well done and really well executed. So if you're somebody who generally doesn't like slow starts, I beg of you to please stick with it because the payoff is worth it. So definitely, definitely don't let that put you off. Definitely don't let the writing style put you off as well because it is quite unique, as I mentioned before. You will get used to it. You just kind of have to bear with it. And then once you get into that groove, you'll, you'll shoot through it. I mean, I read this book, you know, right now, I mentioned in my first video, I, I have a crazy job. And, you know, I work weekends, I work very long hours, but I read this book in three days, which is pretty much unheard of for me at the moment. It generally takes me like a week to read a book of this size, but I read this in three days because I just, uh, yeah, I just had to, I had to finish it. <laughs> it was just very good. The other thing I will mention, which is neither a good thing or a bad thing, is that the magic system in my opinion, isn't really a magic system. It's plant-based. I mean, I don't really know how else to describe it. Essentially, the, the kind of warriors in this story uh, rely on kind of plants and herbs to give them, I guess, like powers. But I, I don't know. I wouldn't really call them powers. It's very unique. It's, it's not um, a magic system that I've ever come across. And I don't even really think of it as a magic system. I think they're just more like performance enhancers because they can't actually do magic. There is this kind of um, a group of people called the Oscaro who are this kind of very mysterious group and you know, they can kind of do things and like heal people and, you know, they've, they've got these kind of like exceptional skills. It's very vague as to who they actually are and where they come from and what, you know, what their kind of belief system is, which is one thing that I actually really enjoyed is that they're, they're this kind of mysterious group of people who occasionally pop in and pop out. But yeah, I mean, the magic system, in my opinion, isn't, <laughs> it isn't really a magic system. It's just like people who have enhanced abilities you know they can move quicker they can smell things better they can see things better so that is the kind of one thing i will flag is is i don't i don't really think this is a typical fantasy book in that sense it's kind of similar to first law right i think first law has a first law definitely has a little bit of magic but it's very very minimal to me this book doesn't really have any magic it's just a different type of enhancement i guess so on to my overall thoughts i gave this book a four borderline 4.5 stars i'm still like umming and eyeing between the two i think it's probably more of a 4.5 for me because i just i really loved it i really really enjoyed it and you know as a result of that i went to my local bookstore and i purchased this bad boy snakewood and then i also went and purchased this bad boy brother red so I've now got all three of his books. If you've read all three of them and you have a recommendation on which one we should read next, please drop a comment below because I'd love to hear if there is kind of like a specific order that we should read the books in. 
and very open to, to suggestions. I think we were gonna go with Brother Red. But yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. I really hope you pick up his books. He is honestly amazing. His his writing is just is just so well done. I think he's very underrated as well. And you know, his books are very grim. That is actually one thing I forgot to mention. His books are very grim. There is, and I, again, this comes down to personal preference. I personally love grim dark. It's it's probably my favorite subgenre of fantasy. There is very little hope in these books. The one series I like to kind of contrast it with is First Law. First Law has a lot of humor in it to counteract the darkness, but this does not have that. Like there's very, very little humor. So if you don't like, you know, violence, if you don't like that kind of persistent hopelessness, this is not the book for you. I definitely would not read this as your first Grim Dark if, if, you're, if you're wanting to get into the genre because I, I do think it's really intense. But if you're somebody who's familiar with the genre and is kind of ready for that and is kind of craving something a little bit darker and grittier, you will love this. So if you're definitely thinking of like reading something a bit darker, pick this up. Anyway, my gush is over. <laughs> um, I really hope you will pick this book up. I think Adrian Selby is going to become an auto buy author for me. I mean, he already is technically because I just went and bought the other two books that he's written. I think he's, he's writing a series right now which as soon as that comes out, I will buy it. And I just, I hope more people read his books because he's just very, very good at what he does. So let me know what your thoughts below. I'm very curious to hear whether you read this book, whether you intend to read this book, whether you liked it, whether you didn't like it. So let's take the conversation down below into the comments. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Feedback as always is very welcome. And I'll see you in the next one. As always, be safe, take care, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.